All right, Fearless Mods fans. Uh, been a little bit of time since we've put out a video. Life is crazy. I'm trying to wrap up uh, a career, move, retire, all kinds of things. So part of that is getting the truck ready to, to help out with the move. So one of the things I've been doing is I've been having some uh, front wheel bearings going out. Sounds like I have snow tires on, but these are all season radials that are always very quiet. So a little bit of a wom 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 when I'm running. And so uh, one thing uh, that you can do, pro tip, is uh, when you're running along and you, and you make a, a hard turn to the left or to the right. Um, so in my instance, rolling along, it's making the, the, the pulsing noise, make a a, uh, a fairly sharp turn to the right where it puts all the weight over on the left and stresses that left wheel bearing and the sound kind of decreased a little. Harder turn to the left, put more of the stress on the right side and the sound didn't decrease. So my assumption is that the, the one on this side is, uh, is the culprit. I'm going to go ahead and replace both and the rotors and the, uh, the brake pads while I'm at it. So let's dig into it. Okay, so I've got the key on, um, just to the on position so that steering will allow me to rotate. I'm going to have to do that multiple times. Let me get some zip ties for this. So first we'll go ahead and take off the, uh, the brake caliper. Zip tie it up here so it's out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and undo the connector up here for the uh, analog brakes, or speed sensor, so that uh, that is taken care of. I'm probably going to have this zip tied up in front of it and don't want that to be blocking my, my access. So the new connector has the piece that connects into the body, so all I am doing is grabbing this one and trying to push the disconnect. Pull it apart if I can. There we go. And there's no rubber grommets here that are laced through here, just kind of pull them out. And that can be out of the way now. Take this off. Got some pretty good scoring on the inside of that rotor, so. zip tie through it, help secure it, so it's not hanging on the brake lines. That, I'm going to keep it mostly out of the way, this will be rotating in here, it might hit this, I'm going to have to move that a little bit, but, and then here's my brake pads, not horrible, but not the greatest, and when you see the, the scoring, and the ridge here, you can tell there's some cracking in them. You know, they've been, they've got a lot of miles on them. Well, we got this all apart, might as well go ahead and replace them. Okay, so the next big thing I'm gonna do is just kind of start getting some stuff lubing up here a little bit. Because it's all gonna have to come loose at some point. So 21 millimeter to get. So we've got to pull off the caliper holder um, so that the rotor can come off. These, I don't know if I've had these up before. Surely I've done a brake job on this in the past. It's got 140,000 miles, so I'm sure I've done the brakes multiple times. Uh, can't remember if I've replaced the rotors. Probably have. It's been a long time. But bottom line, this is 13 years old with uh, a lot of rust. See, 05 to 18, 13 years old, a lot of rust. 
and uh, and those broke off pretty easy with a half breakover bar. Okay, so there's that. Now this should come off, but it's going to be seized on here pretty hard. So it's old. I don't care. Oh, that was pretty easy. One tap. Lucked out. And then here you can see probably the, the pretty heavy groove in here. So really, it's really only making contact in about a one inch swath for a two inch wide brake pad. So not super efficient and has grooved the rotor pretty good. All right, so now the fun part. Getting this off. First thing I'm going to do is remove this cotter pin. And it's a pretty big one, so I'm probably just going to try to keep it. Set that aside. And get ready to fire up the air compressor. Mine is not nearly big enough, but there's a 32 millimeter socket. Take off that center hub nut. And hopefully it's got enough juice to get her going. See what we do here. That wasn't too bad. So we'll call that the easy part of what's got to occur because now we got to get three bolts out of the back side of this. Uh, top, bottom, kind of in the rear and one towards the front. So we'll be having to jockey it back and forth. So what I can do here, we got the, the uh, axle uh, CV joint there that comes in. It really makes you kind of get an angle. So first I'm going to try, I want to get, I want to be able to get some good leverage on these bolts to rest it up really good. Get some W40 on them because I don't have penetrating lube. See if I can get a 21 millimeter socket on there. And break these loose. Because that half inch drive uh, impact socket is thick, and the CV joints make it come out at an angle. I've grabbed a, a three inch extension for the half inch and a, uh, I think this is a seven eighth socket. It's a little bit loose on there, but it allows it to angle down in there. And the fact that it's not um, impact thickness the whole way gives me a little more room to work. Um, but because it's a little loose, it will allow the hammering action of the impact to hammer back and forth a little bit uh, with less effectiveness. But if it allows me to get this off, and we'll call it a victory. Okay, now the fun part. Got to get the hub to separate from its rusted up home. So I'm going to do it the only way I know how without air tools, and that's brute forced. Good force, start breaking loose. All right, right into the soupy quarter panel. Come on. Hope this will be one. You're our only hope.
Good lord. Okay, so this gets chewed up a little bit in the process of driving down in there, so I want to hammer it flat and get rid of that end and anywhere where I've screwed it up so that it can still go on there. Yeah, looks like I get rid of half of those holes and this little piece of got chewed into there. I'll be good. a little bit so that the new one can go in there a little easier. It's rusted. I can beat that one down to submission. some stuff back together here. Nice black rotor. Z-clad coating, their last gold. I've not used these before. It's pretty sharp. We'll see how it works. This job will give you a workout, whether it's just turning the wheel back and forth by hand or hammering the crap out of that hub, it'll get you. Okay, so another little trick I want to show you. So first off, if you can't remember which pad, went on which side of the rotor it's as easy as looking at your old pads so the there's one with a squeaker a wear indicator I wasn't down to it but I was getting pretty shallow and there's one without you can tell in here the one with the squeaker was where the round pucks are which is on the the uh, hydraulic line side the brake line side and then the square ones which are just out here on the stationary posts. So the squeaker goes on the round side. Easy enough. Um, the round side is what we're going to have to push in 
to make room for the the bigger pads. The new the bigger pad the new pads are bigger, so you got to push these back in. The easiest way that I can give you is plop that against them, and then take your C clamp. It drops in here over the over it like this in the middle there and just start cranking it shut. And there you go. So this kicker goes on the on the inside where the pucks are. Try to get this 3M tape off of here. And get it into these channels here. Slide it up to the rotor. So I haven't put the cutter key in there yet because I'm waiting to uh, be able to hold the brakes. You can't do that, obviously, while these are out. You'll push the pucks out and then you'll, if you push the brakes while the brakes are off, the calipers are off, you're going to push the pucks out, you're going to leak out all your fluid and then you're going to have air in the lines that you have to re-bleed. So don't push the brakes while you have these off. Um, but once I get them back on here, what I can do is... Um, hold the brakes, and then try to make sure that this nut is tight, and then I'll put the cotter pin in. All right, so I've got both of those in. Everything's seated up pretty good. This should slide on there. Let me find my two screws that will hold it on. Get a little WD. Now, on these little screws, don't get overzealous. You've been tightening a lot of big, heavy components, and with your brute strength, you could twist these right off. start it up and start pumping up the brakes there's gonna be a lot of movement because everything's loose right now those pucks are pushed all the way in so they will have to take a few pumps um, don't push it all the way to the floor just push about half pedal multiple times until you start to feel it grab and then you can kind of push on a little bit harder um, that'll just keep you from pushing the uh, master cylinder in further than it's used to going and it might have a little bit of sludge build up in there and if you push further you might push some of that sludge into the line so just because it is such an old car I would do that just as a precaution okay so those are connected last thing is this anti skid or uh, speed connector here wheel speed sensor whatever it is in the hub and we are all connected so I'm going to go ahead and pump up the brakes and then tighten that up okay good news is, is the impact got it nice and tight Alright guys, so that is going to be a wrap for these uh, test drive, and uh, if that's all good, then uh, then we're done. New brakes, rotors, and axle hubs. Hopefully it took care of the issue, and now we're ready to go for another 140,000 miles. Um, that's going to be it this time on Fearless Mods. You guys take care.